What's up guys? So I have a short video for you on this Friday. Now, if you came here specifically for researching and fixing a blown fuse, click on this timestamp here. That will take you directly to that point in the video. If you're interested in what else I have to say, then just keep watching. So a couple things. Firstly is that in the new year, I will be uploading on Fridays rather than Mondays. YouTube analytics tells me that you guys are more likely and more inclined to watch videos if I upload on Fridays where you're free the whole weekend rather than Mondays, which makes sense because most of my audience is younger and you guys have school or work. So I'm going to try and upload on Fridays in the new year. If for some reason I can't upload on a Friday, I'll definitely give you guys a video on the following Monday. Also, I did finish my brake calipers the other day. I am now editing through hours and hours and hours of footage. They actually took me five days to uh, disassemble, uh, strip the powder coat, rebuild them, repowder coat them. So I'm, I'm editing through tons of footage and I will have those coming in the next week. I'll probably do multiple videos just like I did when I, uh, you know, replace my pads and rotors, but those are coming. So I want to show you them. I'll show you those in a second um, because I think you guys want to see them and I'll give you that sneak peek. This video specifically is going to be replacing a blown fuse. So about three months ago, I made a video about, you know, replacing a 12 volt outlet in a Subaru or a cigarette lighter and it still didn't work. I don't know why I didn't even think to check the fuse because the fuse could also be bad. But I had a viewer, Chris, who said, hey, did you check the fuse? And I didn't. So today I'm showing you how to check a fuse and replace a fuse if it's blown. So I know you guys really want to see my brakes and here they are. This is my own powder coat job. So it's probably not going to be quite as durable as Brembo, unfortunately, but these colors are from Prismatic Powders. This is their neon yellow with a glow B top coat. The yellow is very close to the uh, Concept WRX. I believe it was 2013, 2014 when they came out with that. I'll post a picture of that so you know exactly what I'm talking about if you don't for some reason. This actually comes very close uh, with the top coat. It also make, helps it match that color. The top coat is glow be clear, which actually glows in the dark. You'll see more videos on that. But I just wanted to show you guys my brakes real quick. Um, they turned out amazing. Like I said, I don't know how long this is gonna last, but I'm gonna enjoy it. And the only reason I don't know is because I did it myself. Um, it's not Brembo's paint job. Brembo had like five layers of paint on these, so I don't expect them to be quite as durable, but I think they're gonna do the job. So I have my fronts right here, my rears, and if you could see this wheel, this is what I was talking about with the gold showing through when I plastic dipped. Some of this is rust, which is just from my brake rotors from sitting for a week but I don't know why my plastic dip didn't turn out great. I really don't care because next year they're getting powder coated. So now that I've shown off my brakes, your car typically has two fuse boxes. The first is in your engine bay and you pop off the cover and here's all your fuses. A lot of these slots will be open. It just depends on your car. And these black things here are relays. If you flip the cover over, it tells you exactly what each position does on this diagram. And you also have spare fuses in case you would need some. Now the second fuse box is inside your car. Every car is different. When I had my Eclipse, there was a panel on the side right here that opened up and my fuse box was in there. Some cars have it on the passenger side under the glove box or somewhere like that. In this car, it's right here. So this is my dash cam. I'm gonna unplug that and flip this down, pop it out, and my fuse box is right there. So on the back of the fuse box cover, it shows all your fuses and what they do. And it also gives you a rating. So if I go to the fourth one over, it says mirror and cigar, which means it controls both of those circuits. And it also is a 20 amp rated fuse. It's very important to make sure you're using the correct fuse for the circuits. If you use something a lower rating for that circuit, it's just gonna blow. And if you use a rating that's higher than that, it's easy to overload the wires and you could cause a fire or short something out. So if I go to the fourth fuse over in the top row, it is a 20 amp fuse. So I'm gonna pull that. And if you look at it, 
you can see that it is blown. I'll show you guys a good fuse. That's what a good fuse looks like. So you can see that the bad fuse is on the left and the good one is on the right. Here's another fuse, it's just a different color, it makes it a little bit easier to see the filament inside. So that's how you can tell a fuse is bad. If that little filament inside is broken, then electricity cannot flow through and it's not going to work. So you just have to replace it with a new fuse. You could pick up fuses just about anywhere, any auto parts store, I think Walmart might even have them. These ones that I have, I got at Harbor Freight and they are cheaper, they're way cheaper. I don't really see an issue with them, so I ha at least I haven't had an issue with them so far. But it really doesn't matter. Fuses can be expensive, but I think these ones are just fine. So I'm going to replace this fuse with a new one. Again, make sure it's the same amperage, otherwise you're going to have issues. And at that point, before I put my cover back, I want to check to make sure everything works. So now that I've replaced my fuse, I want to make sure everything works. So I'm going to turn my car on to the on position. And now this is illuminated and I'm going to check my phone. So that works. And my door mirrors. So now my mirrors and my cigarette lighter works just fine. Thank you, Chris, for suggesting that I check the fuse. I don't know why I didn't think to check that before. If there's anything not working with your car electrically, you should always check the fuses first. There's probably going to be a reason why that fuse blew in the first place. You know, maybe this circuit was overloaded or maybe there's a wiring issue. I know in this car, the issue was that I tried to use a cheap $30 dash cam that didn't have the correct capacitors and things like that. So it basically overloaded the circuit. And I think that was my only issue. You definitely want to make sure that you get to the heart of the issue, otherwise you're just going to keep blowing fuses. It's possible there's a short circuit or something like that, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about checking fuses and replacing them. Like I said, just the most important thing is to make sure that you always use the correct rating on your fuses, otherwise you can run into issues. So with that being said, I have my caliper videos, which are continuing to be edited right now, and I'll catch you guys next time. Uh, I signed a backpack. It wasn't as bad as TJ's. Si TJ signed a boob, literally, like a breast. Hey, that's three questions. Hey, hey <laughs> my show. <laughs> my show, my rules. Coolest thing that I signed. Yeah, I gotta say the boosted board. Best part about the family is just seeing the interaction of everybody else. Getting that interaction um, is really humbling, and there, there's no other feeling like it. So that's definitely the best, best part. Evan, 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 Evan is a great part of the weekend. Um, unfortunately, he knocked TJ's lemonade out of his hand today, so he's kind of gone down in the rankings.